It's never easy dealing with a death, and if someone dies in your house, the practicalities themselves can be overwhelming. So what actions do you need to take? I'm Daniel Barnett, a barrister based in central London, and I'm also the presenter of The Legal Hour on LBC Radio. In this video, I'll explain who you need to notify, I'll explain the legal issues around a burial, and I'll explain about probate or how to deal with the estate. Before I explain what to do first, please do consider subscribing to this channel, giving this video a thumbs up and pressing the notification bell to receive alerts when my latest legal explainer videos are released. First of all, let me say I'm going to use some slightly clinical terms in this video, such as the death, the deceased and the body. It's not to cause offence, and I apologise if this video comes over as a little impersonal, but it's just the easiest way for me to explain the law. I could make this video more sentimental, but I hope you understand why I've taken the decision to use slightly more formal terminology. Now, if the death was expected because the deceased was terminally ill, you should contact their GP. The doctor will visit, and if the doctor, if the GP is sure about the cause of death, they'll issue a medical certificate. You've got to take that medical certificate to the registry office within five days. Now, you can keep the body at home or you can contact a funeral director to arrange for it to be moved to a funeral parlour. It's worth noting that whomever engages the funeral director makes themselves legally responsible for the bill, although it can be covered by the deceased's estate if they have any money in their estate. Now, if this isn't possible and you're struggling with costs, you might be eligible for some financial help. There's advice on paying for funerals linked in the show notes below. In the event of an unexpected death, call 999 and ask for an ambulance and the police. Paramedics will confirm the death and the police will arrange for the body to be moved. After an unnatural or unexpected death, or where the doctor isn't certain about the cause, even if old age is a factor, they will notify the coroner and the coroner may order a post-mortem. You'll have to wait until this is complete before registering the death. If the deceased was an organ donor, tell the doctor and tell the funeral director. Although organ donation is unlikely to be authorised when a death occurs outside a hospital setting, tissue donating may still be possible. When you register the death, you need to provide the medical certificate along with the deceased's proof of address and other identifying documentation. For example, a marriage certificate, a driving licence, an NHS number or a birth certificate. The registrar will issue you with a green form so you can arrange the burial or cremation, the certificate of registration of death, which you need to fill out and return, and a death certificate, which costs £11 per copy. It states in the Births and Deaths Registration Act 1953 that a dead body can't be owned, but it can be possessed in order to be disposed of by burial or by cremation. The coroner may retain a temporary right to hold the body while they investigate. Otherwise, responsibility for the body passes to a personal representative of the deceased. This is usually, but not always, the executor appointed in the will, although that person can choose to pass the responsibility for disposing of the body onto one of the deceased's relatives. If there's no will or no named executors, Rule 22 of the non-contentious probate rules establishes who becomes responsible. The surviving spouse has priority, followed by children, then parents. An unmarried partner, or one without a civil partnership, has no automatic right to make decisions about the body unless they're appointed executor. If there are no surviving relatives, anyone with a stake in the estate can become the administrator. Usually, the person with possession of the body will assume responsibility for disposing of the body, but they aren't obliged to do so. They can pass this task down the hierarchy. But the body must be disposed of in a timely manner, and you can be prosecuted for preventing a lawful and decent burial. There are alternatives to burial or cremation, although they need to have been chosen by the deceased and sanctioned by whomever is responsible for the body. And those alternatives are long-term preservation, for example, through embalming, donation to medical science, 
cryonic preservation in liquid nitrogen with the hope that science will one day be able to revive the body and plastination. That's a conservation method where water and fat in the body are replaced with polymers and then set. Now you may have some idea of what the deceased wanted in terms of a funeral or you might find details in their will or their letter of wishes. However, you're not legally obliged to follow their instructions. If there are disagreements about the burial or disagreements about where cremation ashes should end up, you can go to arbitration. Failing agreement, you can seek an injunction from the court to stop a burial or cremation taking place. Under the Senior Courts Act 1981, a judge can decide who should be granted the letters of administration. Now, in the case of Anstey against Mundell, three daughters and their cousin argued about whether to bury their father's body in the UK or in Jamaica, where the deceased was born, and where two of them understood it had been his wish to be buried. Another daughter sought an injunction to stop the body being taken outside the UK, as she and her sister believed their father wanted to be laid to rest in England. The court looked at the criteria which are set out in a case called Hartshorn and Gardner and considered the deceased's wishes and the reasonable requirements and wishes of the family, the place where the deceased was most closely connected with and that the body should be disposed of with all proper respect and decency and if possible without further delay. Now that last factor is deemed to be the most important. In this case, it was found to be most appropriate for burial to take place in Jamaica. The daughter's wishes were given more weight than their cousins, and the judge made a provision that allowed them to bring the case back to court if the body hadn't been buried by a certain date. Executors are responsible for dealing with any personal possessions and money left behind. They have to adhere to the deceased's wishes as set out in their will. When someone dies intestate, that means with no will, their spouse or their civil partner inherits the first £270,000 and half of anything remaining. The other half of anything remaining is split between any children. Either the executors or the closest living relative may have to apply for probate. That's the legal right to deal with the estate. You might not need probate if there's less than £5,000 to be inherited or if any property or shares or money is jointly owned. Debts have to be paid off first and it's sensible, it's sensible, although it's not actually a legal requirement, that you place what's called a Section 27 notice in the local newspaper for two months at a cost of around £200. Now this lets creditors know that the person has died and gives them the chance to make a claim on the estate for money or property they're owed. Placing a, 20, a Section 27 notice protects the executor or the personal representative from being personally liable for debts and having to settle them themselves. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, you might also be interested in why royal wills are kept secret from the public. I'm Daniel Barnett. Thanks very much for watching. Please do subscribe to this channel. Bye bye.